Welcome to NPTEL. Myself, Dr. Joyanto Das from Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering, IIT Kharagpur. I will be teaching you advanced materials and processes. Today, we will discuss one of the very major benefit of rapid solidification processing. You may recall from our last discussions that if we quench a liquid through rapid solidification, here rapid solidification means the cooling rate is high and this high value means 10 to the power 2 to 10 to the power 6 Kelvin per second. In that case, we said that if alpha has a maximum solid solubility, alpha is a solid solution which has a maximum solid solubility of B in A that solid solubility can be extend if we cool the liquid, quench the liquid very fast. And today we will go into deeper insight of the thermodynamic aspect of that particular extension of solid solubility concept. So, um, here the point is that during rapid solidification, how does the extension of solid solubility occur? Before going to this discussion, we first need to understand one of the very important concept that is called T naught concept. In a free energy versus composition diagram, all the points on the common tangent from point A to B represent the free energy. Please have a look at this diagram carefully. So, at a given temperature, let us say T 1 is a given temperature in a phase diagram, this is a free energy versus composition diagram. Okay. And I have the free energy curve of solid and I have a free energy curve of liquid. So, this is for liquid, this one is for solid. And let us say, if you look at the phase diagram corresponding to this free energy versus composition diagram, the the free uh, the, the the phase diagram appears to be like temperature versus concentration, and I have selected this particular temperature T one and plotted the free energy versus composition diagram. So here uh, we all know that in the left hand side where the free energy of the uh, of the solid is lower than the liquid. Uh, so, here basically I have solid phase which is stable. In the right hand side I have liquid which is stable because this is the free energy curve for the liquid. And now if I draw a common tangent then the common tangent from A to B here liquid plus solid both are stable and that is also represented here. So, in this side I have solid, in this side I have liquid, in between I have solid plus liquid. So, this is a typical uh, the, uh, phase diagram explanation that we have learned. Now, uh, from A to B because a, a mixture of solid and liquid which has a lower free energy than either solid or the liquid that is why we get a mixture of solid plus liquid in this composition range at a given temperature of T 1. Now, it is basically the most stable state liquid plus solid in this particular composition range between C A to C B okay, is the uh, most stable uh, uh, um, state. However, uh, which indeed should have a um, uh, two phase region. Now, at T 1 temperature the concentration range below C 0 the solid phase is more stable uh, than the liquid phase. What I am talking about the metastability of the system. So, if I take a liquid, uh, so let us say I am uh, talking about such a composition. Okay. So, I have a liquid uh, and then I have always a decrease of the free energy up to here. So, this can be also here means I have liquid 
I, I cool it down. So, here the solid free energy is always lower than the liquid. So, I can keep on increasing my composition and then I can reach up to point O where the, the, the free energy of the solid and the liquid they are the same. Now, in the right hand side the liquid is always stable, uh, liquid is always stable than the solid phase. So, um, I can draw a uh, um, this uh, the the locus of point O with respect to different temperature means the free energy composition diagram at different different temperature I can draw the locus of this point O and I will get basically this particular curve and this uh, point O in the free energy versus composition plot represent the point where both the solid and liquid phase have the same free energy level that already understood by us. So, the trace of this C 0 concentration at each given temperature can be expressed in a phase diagram and this dotted line is called as a T naught curve. Okay. So, this dotted curve is basically the T naught curve. So, um, there is some other important factor uh, related with this T naught curve. What I want to mean that if I start with the liquid, let us say I have this is my average composition, I start with the liquid, I cool it down and so in this particular composition range, I have always a decrease of the free energy. Okay. And in such a case, I do not need the liquid to be partitioned, means partitioning means partitioning of the alloying elements I am talking about. So, if I have uh, a liquid composition which is here C, I do not need A and B type of atom to diffuse so that this liquid can transform into the solid. So, in this particular case the liquid can be directly transformed into solid without any atomic diffusion to occur, means long range partitioning I am talking about. So, um, it is very clear that in the left hand side of the O, I really do not need any partitioning of the of the allowing constituent, means the enrichment of B and enrichment of A component does not require at all. So, the composition of the liquid and the composition of the solid will be remain same. So, even though at this T 1 temperature the maximum solubility of this solid phase is up to here, but I can extend it up to this composition. Okay. So, this is the fundamental aspect of this T naught curve uh, to, to enhance the extension of the solid solubility. So, from such a composition of B, let us say this is the B side and this is the A side, I can extend the solid solubility up to here, but beyond this it is not possible and here liquid is stable, liquid is stable and I need partitioning of the long range partitioning of the atomic species. So, uh, once again uh, if we think about the usefulness of this TTT curve, uh, first it assist basically to determine the possibility of the partition less solidification means the left hand side of this T naught curve will give us a partition uh, less solidification. Also it can assist the extension of the solid solubility. So, we need to think about what is really this partition less solidification means the composition of the solid is equals to the composition of the liquid at the interface means uh, I have a liquid and I have a interface where solid. So, the solid phase is growing. So, the composition here of the liquid and the composition of the solid they remain the same. So, these are equal. So, uh, a thermodynamic temperature that exists where the highest interface temperature at which the partitionless solidification can occur and this temperature is called as a T naught temperature. So, the partitionless solidification can be achieved 
through supercooling or undercooling of the melt to a high degree. So, if undercooling goes uh, much higher, we call it as a supercooling. Um, now, please have a uh, look at these two uh, diagram that I like to uh, show you. So, we understood that if we take a composition that is C dash 0 and uh, cool it very fast or under cool it, then we will get actually a alpha here and alpha here uh, has a, a, a uh, composition that is uh, definitely a composition that is lower than the maximum maximum uh, uh, maximum solubility of beta. However, if we can still go further into this side and then I can quench it and still I will get alpha. So, this is actually the partition less solidification because in this case we do not need any atomic species to be partitioned. But if we go a little bit away from this T naught point where uh, alpha and liquid uh, a coexist, in this case liquid is mostly stable. Hmm? On the right hand side if we come then also here liquid is stable. Okay? And if we simply quench a liquid, then um, we do not get any partition less solidification. So, here it will be partitional solidification means at the solid liquid interface the atomic species need to be partitioned means long range diffusion of atoms are required. And now, if the T g is relatively higher, then instead of partitioning to occur, we can quench the liquid and transform the liquid into a glassy phase. So, this is the composition range uh, where it is possible, but one thing please have a look here the T naught line are more steeper at the same time they do not cut each other. So, that is why I get a small window of getting glass in this composition range. So, if the eutectic is more deeper and deeper and this T naught line are more stiffer, then I will get such a possibility to get a glass. Now, uh, so this is the my glass forming range. On the other hand, in this case, you can see the T naught lines are not so stiff and they cut with each other and in this case here we can again get a partition less solidification with extension of both the phases. How? We quench it and, and uh, since this is just below the T naught line. So, if we reach here then I have a possibility to get a super saturated that uh, uh, alpha and super saturated beta. And here if T g is somewhat here, then we do not get actually the T g, I mean the glass transition here. So, the glass forming range where the two T naught curve cuts the T g line in this range, this is I am talking about the liquid has no chance to undergo a partition less solidification once the liquid reaches to glass transition temperature, then basically it will undergo a glass transition and the liquid transform into a glass. So, the deeper the eutectic then the steeper the T naught line and we will get a better uh, glass forming range. And this is, uh, is one of the very important aspect that you sh should uh, remember uh, to understand the glass formation in any of the uh, near eutectic composition. We will discuss more detail today. So, uh, so far we were talking about this partitional and partition less solidification. So, once again uh, let us try to recapitulate with a binary very simple uh, phase diagram here this is the composition of the B and here two species or atomic species one is A and B and this is the temperature axis of Y. So, uh, below T naught below T naught line these are the two different T naught line one is for the liquid beta and another one is for uh, liquid alpha. So, in that case actually we uh, get a, a super saturated uh, solid solution of alpha up to this range. Let us say if I think about this temperature and now I have selected uh, uh, T 1 
T 1 you understand uh, which is uh, at a very high temperature and then interesting will be T 2, T 3 and T 4. So, the, the, the free energy versus composition diagrams are, are shown here this is for uh, T 3, this is for T 2 and this one is for T 4. So, here uh, in case of T 2 we can see that up to here I can extend the solid solubility of the alpha phase here I can get the maximum solid solubility of beta which can be extended up to here alpha can be extended up to here and in between it will be liquid which is stable. So, in this case the, the, the partition less solidification um, range for alpha is up to here partitional solidification require within this particular composition range. So, um, so the let us say the partitioning uh, solidification on the right hand side of the T naught curve. So, right hand side means in this side and uh, here for T naught curve this is in the left hand side. So, the composition C 2 if we undercool it let us say we have taken a composition C 2 and then we are undercooling it okay. uh, or, or supercooling it the liquid undergo a partitioning and there is no driving force for partitionless solidification that we already understood because uh, because liquid has the highest uh, the, 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 the lowest uh, uh, free energy. Okay. So, uh, I do not get any driving force to produce let us say super saturated alpha or beta because this is the, 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 the lowest one. Okay. Uh, uh, definitely from the stability of point of view alpha beta mixture should be the most stable one, but when we are talking about metastability then the liquid has the has the lowest free energy here. So, on the left hand side of the T naught curve at composition C 1 partition less solidification can happen if we undercool the liquid means liquid having composition C 1 and transform to a solid having a composition C 1 that is already understood by us. And uh, instead of having two phase mixture, if we undercool the liquid, then we will get a single phase alpha of the same composition of the liquid in this side. Uh, however, uh, if we take a C2 composition, if we take a C2 composition in this particular case, then we need a partitional solidification to occur in this range. And if glass transition temperature is little bit higher, then we will get a glass. Otherwise, let us say at T 4 also what we have that here. So, liquid uh, is, is present and uh, almost let us say the, the, the we can we uh, they are alpha and beta they have basically the uh, alpha and beta they have the, the lowest free energy. Now, uh, with the same concept if we uh, if we continue. Uh, so, the extension of solid solubility means we can create a super saturated solid solution. So, uh, in this particular range uh, not only we get a extension of the solid solubility, but also we can create a super saturated solid solution because we can get extension of the solid solubility and we undercool a liquid uh, below T naught curve instead of having a normal solubilization with a primary alpha phase. Uh, plus eutectic mixture we will get a super saturated solid solution. What I want to mean if I simply think about such a composition range uh, or a composition uh, in the left hand side then uh, here I should get a primary alpha and below this I should get alpha plus eutectic mixture of alpha plus beta that is expected here, but if we quench very fast then I will get a single phase alpha. So, instead of getting a eutectic microstructure uh, and primary alpha phase, we can simply uh, get a single phase alpha. Okay. So, this is uh, the benefit of the, the, the rapid solidification. However, one should keep it in mind that the minimum undercooling delta T should be T L minus T naught. So, the, uh, let us say for a, this particular composition of C 1, we need this minimum amount of undercooling, so that we can overcome this T naught curve and come to below the T naught line. So, the T naught curve slightly depressed below the stable liquid curve makes a good candidate for the extension of the solid solubility. A mixture of alpha and beta crystal will form 
each phase having the same composition of the liquid that we already talked about in uh, my earlier slide. Now, uh, we have uh, discussed that during mechanical alloying we can produce amorphous phase, during rapid solidification processing also we will get some uh, um, glass forming range. However, the question comes to our mind whether this glass forming range is the same for all the different non equilibrium processing or not. So, people have investigated that uh, particular aspect and find out that in case let us say of such a phase diagram where you have multiple different reactions. So, like here you have one eutectic, here is another eutectic, uh, here you have a primary phase which is alpha and so on. So, in that case let us say this is a, a, a just a case in case of nickel niobium system. So, if we go for this splat quenching method then uh, amorphous phase is possible a near eutectic range. So, this is the, the range where you will get amorphous phase, but beyond this range you may get a mixture of the crystalline plus amorphous phase nearby region or let us say in this case. Whereas, uh, let us say for sputtering you will get a larger range means a sputtering phenomena you already know and let us say the laser quenching you will get a larger. However, uh, in case of mechanical alloying actually uh, you will get a much larger uh, amorphous range than a splat quenching or melt spinning. So, uh, this is let us say a RSP rapid solidification processing and this is the comparison with the mechanical alloying and mechanical alloying uh, gives us a relatively wider range of the glass forming ability. And uh, uh, in case of rapid solidification processing, we need a deep eutectic, okay? uh, because the T naught line that should not cut each other even you decrease the temperature and if glass transition temperature is higher then we will get. So, in this case let us say um, I can simply extend the T naught curve and in this case let us say T naught curve and then I may get a composition range where this glass formation is possible. Okay. Whereas, such a mechanism or thermodynamic understanding does not require in case of mechanical alloying where uh, the crystal which is undergoing uh, excessive alloying or super saturation then the crystal free energy become become higher than the liquid okay, or, or, or the amorphous phase and therefore, the crystal transform into a into a glassy phase actually. So, uh, the glass forming range uh, at the center equiatomic composition is much more wider in many of the system. So, in case of mechanical alloying the thermodynamic aspect appear to be uh, dominate where the kinetic factor appears to decide the glass forming uh, during the rapid solidification processing. Now, uh, there are uh, two other important aspect we must uh, try to, to understand these are called as uh, coupled growth. Uh, what I want to mean if I have a liquid and solid interface and I have a solid interface then this interface is growing inside the liquid and uh, let us say for a given uh, delta T, delta T here is the undercooling. And in that case, I may need some atomic species to diffuse to the localized region or may not need if it is in case of a of a super saturated solid solution. But uh, we can uh, uh, not generalize the situation in case of a eutectic means if I take such a composition is it necessary to get a 100 percent eutectic microstructure only when the uh, only when the composition just lie at the eutectic point. So, uh, probably it is not because we have two phase that is growing together. So, I have alpha phase I have beta phase. So, here it is alpha I have beta. Now, these two phase are growing and at the interface the partitioning is occurring, partitioning of the alloying element means B type of atoms are enriching B 
beta and a type of atom are enriching alpha. Now, if we think about the individual growth rate of alpha and beta, they may or may not be similar. Even though if I take a off eutectic composition and cool very very slowly, then if this growth rate is almost equal, then we will get a wider window for getting a coupled growth. Here coupled growth means the growth of alpha and beta will occur together. So, one will not dominate with other. Okay. So, in that case I will get such a eutectic microstructure for a wider range, but uh, this can happen only when the, the coupled growth zone or coupled zone of eutectic is symmetric. In this case you can see that the eutectic plus alpha, this alpha basically means the primary alpha, where alpha plus liquid exists here, here beta plus liquid exists here. In this right hand side it is eutectic plus beta. Okay. So, uh, if such two different coupled growth uh, zone exist and eutectic uh, has a quite wider and uh, symmetric type of coupled zone and if we cool a liquid of such a composition it is much easier to get a glass. Okay. And in this particular case uh, if we go to right hand side of the composition we will get glass plus beta in the left hand side we will get glass plus alpha. But the question comes here how uh, this explanation is valid means what I said if the undercooling is very slow what does it mean undercooling is very slow means the growth rate is also very slow. Here the growth rate is linked with the velocity growth rate I am talking about the growth velocity of the solid phases. So, V c let V is let us say the, the, the growth velocity. So, this growth velocity scales with the undercooling that we produce that is by delta t square. So, if uh, 2 degree undercooling is more then uh, the velocity will increase 4 times. Okay. So, the, it multiplied by a constant. So, V is the growth velocity and delta T is the undercooling and K is a constant. For a very very slow growth velocity for within such composition range we will get a eutectic. Okay. But let us say I have taken a off eutectic alloy. Let us imagine at this moment that I have taken a composition that is off eutectic alloy and I am showing it here. So, a, in this very slow growth velocity we will get a eutectic. Now, if I keep on increasing the growth velocity, I will get actually the, I will get actually beta. Beta basically means that the pro eutectic beta I am talking about. Okay, and uh, so the solid liquid interfacial uh, uh, temperature, uh, the temperature of the interface will also increase actually because the heat will uh, recalcitrance will occur and so on. So on the other hand. Um, if I keep on increasing the growth velocity and then uh, very fast cooling if we apply I will get a I will get a glass because if the temperature uh, the, the, the temperature uh, reaches below glass transition temperature which is definitely lower than that. So, I will always get a T g here and so eutectic uh, temperature is here uh, and uh, the the, the temperature for, for beta is lying somewhere here. right? So, this is the liquidus temperature I am talking about. So, this is the trace of the temperature we are talking about with the growth velocity. However, I, if the cooling rate is somewhat in between this region then I will get a mixture of beta plus uh, g uh, the, the glass. So, V a and V c these are the two uh, the velocity range within which we expect that if V c is the critical growth velocity beyond which we can uh, for, uh, get a composite microstructure means if the velocity growth velocity lie in this range then I will get a crystal plus glass. And this is the understanding we need uh, that if in such a region uh, we can reach when the growth velocity is just above the critical velocity we can form to a glass. But if we shift the composition to left hand side 
then we have a wider window in order to form a glass. So, uh, this is the explanation came uh, due to the symmetric nature of the of the coupled zone or a regular eutectic which is explained through that I have two phases which is growing in a liquid. Uh, here I have alpha, I have beta and I have alpha. So, they are growing together and the growth rate are very much uh, close to each other and uh, they are quite symmetric in nature in terms of the growth coupled growth. And so, if the undercooling is very slow, very very slow velocity will be achieved. In that case, we will get a eutectic even though the composition is not really at the eutectic point. Now, on the other hand, this coupled zone may not be symmetric and it could be asymmetric. So, what does happen if the, the, the zone is asymmetric in nature? You can see here, so this is a asymmetric zone where eutectic probab uh, formation probability is within this composition range and this is called as a skewed coupled zone eutectic. For a asymmetric coupled zone eutectic or a irregular eutectic, eutectic will be replaced with the glass with a larger region of the growth velocity if it is applied. So, I need a much uh, larger velocity. So, the glass formation will may not be so easier like the, the other one actually. So, um, uh, uh, the best glass forming composition should be always an off eutectic composition where the, the faceted size uh, with a faceted size of the eutectic is, is, is pronounced and that is why uh, it has been uh, shown. Instead of getting such kind of composite, we can always get a, a, a and, and it has been observed this off eutectic composition are always better uh, and we can produce such a under cooling and we can bypass the formation of the eutectic and overcoming uh, by formation of a glass. So, uh, let us say if the velocity is very slow here also again we will get a eutectic and let us say if I I have a, a chance uh, to, to increase the velocity then we will get a beta, but here uh, T g uh, is, is lying uh, in this temperature range. So, so, I will get if I can cross this velocity uh, and go above this velocity V a, I will get a glass in this range. So, this is just a schematic of the phase diagram of a asymmetric uh, coupled zone. So, usually uh, when uh, designing a composition uh, for formation of a glass or rapid solidification processing to achieve a glass, we must consider all these uh, um, coupled zone uh, below the eutectic exist and the growth velocity of the individual phases and also the concept of T naught should be considered. So, with this we complete the discussion on the, the advanced processes this week and we will continue with a new topic in the next class. Thank you very much.